What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install a dash cam so it's powered by your rear view mirror. Now there's a few things to note before you start. The first is this will only work if there's a power source behind your rear view mirror. For example, an auto dimming feature, a backup camera, or some of the call assist buttons if they're in the rear view mirror. To make sure that there is a power source behind your rear view mirror, I recommend simply taking apart all of the trim because you will need to do that. And double check that there is a cable going from your rear view mirror into the plug-in. If there is, you will need to order the adapter for that to make this work. The ones I did order were the Dongar uh, technology ones. They are roughly anywhere between $35 to $50 depending on the different plugs, but you will need that adapter to make this work because the other end of the adapter has a USB cable, which you can plug the dash cam straight into and it will power. The one benefit from powering it to your rear view mirror compared to wiring it in or plugging it into your cigarette lighter is that the dash cam will only work and draw power whenever the vehicle is on. When the vehicle is off, the dash cam will not be drawing power. So that is why I wanted to go with this method. So again, I'm gonna be showing you guys on my 2021 Dodge Ram Classic. So let's get into the install. So I've seen various videos of uh, people doing this for the same vehicle. So various Dodge products, it's gonna be the exact same. If you do not have a Dodge, but you're trying to install it so it's uh, powered by rear view mirror, it's very similar. You just have to remove the trim. So my Dodge here, there's this little clip right here. You just literally push it down, which it literally looks like I didn't do anything but it is down now. The next thing is I do need a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver and put in here on each side and pop out the pins and this part should be able to be removed. So just like that, I popped out each side and now this part here should come straight down and straight out, just like that. So now for this other piece of trim, you will have to remove this as well. I've seen other videos where you put your finger in behind this opening here and you click the uh, little clip. There's only one clip in behind here. I found that very difficult. What I did was actually take the flathead screwdriver and you can actually see the clip right here. It's that part right there. I just put the screwdriver in and take, give a little twist and it will pop right out. So just like that, it just gave it a little tug with the screwdriver and it did pop right out. Just like that, it is removed. So here we go. Now, after all that is removed, there is this little plug right here. So you just push up on this part here and it pulls straight out. And that's what you have to match to make sure it's the same as what you have to order for the adapter. So here is the adapter here that I did have to order. This one here was $45 on Amazon, free shipping. Now, this end here is the one that's going to plug into the harness. The other end here is the plug we pulled out of the existing vehicle. It's going to plug into this one and then now we're going to have a USB cable so we can plug in the dash cam. So first we're just going to plug this end in here just like that and here the click. Then the other end we're going to plug it into this one here. That end plugged in there. The other end's plugged in over here. I just pushed it up so it's out of the way so whenever the other trim gets put back on it is good. And now we do have the USB cable part here. So now before I go and put all the trim back together I do want to plug in the dash cam cable so it does run through the back instead of trying to figure it out later. So the dash cam that I chose is the Garmin dash cam mini 2. Now you can use any dash cam for your vehicle but I did want something that was small and powerful so I decided to go with this one here and it honestly is really small. So I did want to do this part on camera, but it was very, very hard. So I already have the cable that was plugged in. It's now wired to the back exactly how I wanted it to come out. So it looks sleek. It's gonna go straight to the dash cam here, which is really small. So it's gonna be about here. The rest of the cable, cause it was a little long of cable. It's the one that came with the dash cam. It uh, is elastic and uh, bundled in here. And it's really hard to see, but this is the other end of the adapter. So putting the cover back on with the long cable was very difficult. It took me about 10, 15 minutes just because every time I tried to put it on, a cable would get into the way of the clip and it wouldn't actually go into place until I actually pushed everything out of the way. Finally, it finally worked for me. But now the last step that we have to do is put that cover back on and then test and install the dash cam. To put this piece back on, you literally are just going to push the mirror down as low as it can go. You're going to slide it in here. You're going to put the clips back into place. So you might need the flathead screwdriver to pop them out to open up. And then you're going to put it back into place. So here we go. I have it all reassembled, which was kind of a task. Uh, I did originally have a 
uh, the cable that came with the dash cam, but it was really long, so I had some of it tucked up inside here. The problem with that is you couldn't put this back in place properly because uh, there's too much cable in the way, so I did end up using the cable that came with the adapter, which is a shorter cable, as you can see really short compared to the other one so the dash cam is going to go around here and the rest of this is going to be tucked in but since it's already put back in place that's uh there should be no issues with that whatsoever so of course as i am sitting down to edit this video and getting ready to upload it i've just realized that some of the clips did not record it properly all it was was simply me attaching the dash cam to the wire that i just installed which the dash cam i went with was the garmin mini 2 so that clip didn't work, and then me attaching the uh, dash cam to the mounts and just attaching it to the windshield didn't work. So that stuff's not really the most important of which dash cam I went with and how I attached it to the windshield because that's pretty straightforward. What was important for this video was me showing you guys how to take apart your trim, how to install the adapter, the plug, and the wire, and then put everything back together. So that is what I showed in this video. Now, the one thing that I do want to mention is I did show you guys on my 2021 Dodge Ram. Your vehicle is obviously going to look a little bit different of the trim that you do have to remove, but it's going to be pretty much the straight concept of what I showed you guys, which you have to remove the trim. And as long as that cable is there, you can order an adapter, plug it in, plug the cable back into the existing harness, and then plug a cable that came with your dash cam into the USB ports and put everything back together where the trim is all sitting back properly and the cable is sticking out the ends, then you can attach your dash cam. So just because I showed you guys on the Dodge Ram Classic, my truck, doesn't mean it won't work for you. The trim's just gonna look a little different, but usually the adapter is pretty straightforward. You just unplug and connect to the new one. Now, while I'm talking about the adapter, there is one thing that I want to mention is I actually, for this video, had to go through three different adapters. The first one said it fit for the Dodge Ram. Whenever I took everything apart and tried to plug it in, it didn't fit in the uh, harness that is existing on the truck properly. It looked a little bit different. So I did order one that looked right, which was for a Mazda uh, vehicle. It fit in, but after I attached everything like you guys seen in this video, unfortunately, there was no power coming to it. I thought maybe there was a problem with the dash cam, so I attached the cable into the USB ports uh, down below near my radio and the cigarette lighter as well, and the dash cam did work on those, but not plugged into the rear view mirror, so I thought something was off there. I actually had to order one that was specific for Dodge, but I had to order it from the States from the same company because it wasn't on Amazon.ca, and Amazon.com did not have it. So I actually had to contact the company, order it straight from them, and it took over a month to get it. So it was the right ends, and it actually drew power. So depending on your vehicle, just because you order one, and if the adapter doesn't work, contact the company. They probably have one that does fit and will draw power for your vehicle. So keep that in mind. Obviously, it didn't work for me the first time, but I finally found one that did work for me. Now it's all put together properly, and it does look amazing. It is nice and clean, and it really beats having that wire run down along your truck and plugged into the cigarette lighter, because to me, that looks very sloppy, and it always consistently draws power, and you have to remember to unplug it if you don't want it to continue to draw power. This way, everything is tucked away. You literally don't realize it's there, but it is nice to have a dash cam because you never know when you're going to need it, especially nowadays with people and how people are trying to scam people a lot more. It's just an extra peace of mind for myself, and that's why I wanted to get a dash cam. So now you guys know what you need to do to attach it and install it so it is drawing power from your rear view mirror. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please take care. Peace.